The other day someone said that everyone knows that we are not under a curse. And when I heard that, I thought, uh, everyone does not, because I don't know that. So I wanted to research what does the word actually say about this, because my understanding is we're under a curse. And I believe that the reason this person was saying this is because it does not directly say, the, the word does not directly say that we are under a curse. It says that the serpent is cursed. It says that the ground is cursed. But then Genesis goes on to explain the lasting consequences that man was given for that original sin. That's a curse. And it made me realize that people just don't understand what a curse is. Like they'll be more, they're, they're more ready to say that some witchy poo has put a curse on them and therefore they're suffering these consequences in their life. Well, the Bible does not say that anybody has the ability to put a curse on you, nor does it say that anybody ever has except for God. So there seems to be a lack of understanding and wisdom regarding what a curse actually is, who places them, and when things are not going well in your life, how you need to evaluate that. Let's look at what God has to say about curses using that specific language of a curse. Genesis 3.14, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done that, thou art cursed. Above all cattle and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Genesis 3.17, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. I mean, he's not just cursing the ground, he's cursing Adam as well. Thou shalt eat of it in sorrow all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall bring it forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return to unto the ground. For out of it was taken, wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. God has just made Adam's life difficult. What is that if that's not a curse? And in verse 16, he says to the woman, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shalt be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. These are consequences that God has given for sinful behavior, for disobedient behavior, that is what he does when he's sending a curse. And no amount of anything in the moment is going to make this go away, that we're actually working this out. This is the condition that was placed on humanity when Eve sinned. It will eventually change if we work out our covenant. We're being saved from a curse that God placed on humanity. The law was introduced in order that we would obey and be saved. And Paul even uses the language, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. All right, let's look at other contexts of cursed. Genesis 9, 25, and he said, cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. Genesis 12, 3, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So there's consequences. That This is a consequence. That's what cursing is. It's not just something that people like willy-nilly say some magic words and they send out a, a curse to you. They do some voodoo. They read from a witch book of potions and curses. The, the, that is not what a curse is. Genesis twenty seven twenty nine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that curseth thee and blessed be every one be he that blesseth thee. Genesis 40, 49, 7. Cursed be their anger for it was fierce and their wrath for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Numbers 5.18, and the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and uncover the woman's head and put 
the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causeth the curse. Okay, this is, of course, the, uh, the bitter water of jealousy. If the woman had been unfaithful to the husband, she would endure a curse. If she hadn't, she would not. Again, it was a consequence. When I was ill, when we are handed over to spirits, I was under a curse. I was dealing with spiritual illness. I was dealing with spirits. And in order to be restored, there are certain things that we have to do. We have to return to him. We have to be dealt with on our sin. We have to repent truly by examining and changing. So it's really ridiculous to say that we're, everybody knows that we're not in our curse. I mean, I don't know who everybody is, but they don't sound very smart. They don't sound like they're reading the word or they understand what a curse is or that this was a direct consequence of Eve's sin. And that we actually have to be saved from curses, saved from this curse, saved from this sinful state that resulted from this curse. That's what we're being saved from, because otherwise we couldn't be reconciled to God. I can understand why Satan wanted to twist that. I just don't understand how anyone bought it. But I wanted to make sure it was clear. Please discern this message with God.